I grew up playing a game on television called Deal or No Deal, and Howie Mandel would always ask that question after showing a sum of money from the banker or in a briefcase. Well, in honor of one of my favorite shows growing up, I want to ask you all some Deal or No Deal questions about the Steelers. And if you had the chance, would you take the deal or walk away because of something better? Starting with Presley Harvin. He's been a guy who, as a draft pick, we expected to be performing at a more elite level. Currently, he ranks 19th with a punting grade in the 60s, specifically around 65, and only 18 of his 58 attempts landing inside of the 20-yard line. Not to mention, there are two undrafted free agents currently sitting at the top of PFF's rankings. All that considered, would you draft or not draft Presley Harvin if you have the chance to go back to it, Chris? No, oh, not draft. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can find fungible players, useful players in the seventh round of drafts. I mean, this isn't as bad as when they drafted Daniel Sepulveda in the fourth round and he was a mediocre punter. You don't draft these guys. I mean, I think it's been proven maybe if you have a generational talent at kicker where they're putting points on the board. But quickly, folks, when is the punter coming on the field? When you failed at your stated objective to move the football. I know it's a field position game. I'm sorry, I just do not think that that's worth a draft pick unless it's a generational guy. And Harvin won the Ray Guy Award. He's not a generational punter. I could go out and kick a punt for 17 no, yards. Uh, no 17 way. yards. Not a 17 yards. Okay, that's what I I'm you saying. Said 70. <laughs> 17 yards. That's what that was I want to see puns. you. I want to see you I could put kick a helmet a punt. on. I could punt a ball 17 yards. I want to see you put a helmet on. I'm saying no field deal. A snap, <laughs> drop the ball and punt at 17 punt yards. All right. With, with, with giant well, without men getting without at getting you. turned into like liquid on <laughs> Anyways, the field. Anyways, no deal for me. No deal for both of you. AJ, what about you? No, I'm going to agree as well. I say no deal, and it's unfortunate. There's been a variety of factors why, you know, he's had some difficulties in the last few seasons. Um, obviously, there were a lot of high expectations for him, but um, it's just been proven over time that he's not their guy, and uh, especially the way the Steelers have been playing. Field position is key. They can't shoot themselves in the foot, and mm -hmm. that's what keeps happening in the game. All right, let's open our next case. The Steelers <laughs> quarterback situation has been an ongoing topic since the end of last season. We talked about it so much today. Knowing how things have panned out with Mitch Trubisky, if you could go back in time right now, if you could go back in time, would you sign or not sign Mitch Trubisky? Rich? I would still sign him. Um, I, I thought, you know, it, this all this happened before the draft. And this is what I didn't understand. So I, I would still sign him. Um, you had him and Mason Rudolph compete for the job. I thought he might have been a better starting quarterback than Mason Rudolph. I was one of those guys in that camp that wanted them to sign Mitch Trubisky. So I would still sign him. They got a good deal for him for a backup. And I think that's one of the reasons that they were able to draft Kenny Pickett. I'll let AJ take this one because I'm going to fire. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> He's I'm ready to pounce. Up AJ, over you got to be a nice <laughs> buffer between what, I, what Richie did and oh, what I'm I guess about I to do. I'm being nicer. I feel like I'm being redundant, but I, I've been saying this all season long. I don't feel there was any line around the block aside from the Steelers for Mitch Trubisky before the draft. It was a puzzling decision to me. Um, definitely a no deal. Uh, even before this season, I just didn't understand it for him to be the number two pick in 2017. And obviously it didn't work out with several franchises. And if they thought something was going to be different with the Steelers, I just didn't see what they were seeing. Obviously he's a stop gap. He's not the future, but I, I don't agree with the decision. No, no deal. No deal. I'm the only Whoa. one that's taking the Look deal. at me. Look at <laughs> me, Rich. He's hardly making any money. He's paid it's like a backup. You're like somebody's grandma who got a great deal on something or somebody's dad who bought like a nice TV on like it was the floor model. Yeah. And they say, hey, I would do it all over again. I got a great deal on it. No deal. Here's why. <laughs> you drafted a 24-year-old quarterback whose pro readiness and high floor, low, maybe lower but ceiling. But you did that after you signed him. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that. If they were had any inkling, Kenny Pickett was their guy, and I think they obviously did. They don't just go willy-nilly into the draft. They shouldn't have done it. And if they wouldn't have gotten Pickett, you should have been fine with just seeing what Mason Rudolph could do finally after a billion years here of not doing anything. That was a wasted signing. I don't care how. You say that it was a cheap signing. That's the indictment. AJ said it perfectly. Where was the line around the block to sign Mitch Trubisky? It's a deal. It's like going to Marshalls so, or TJ Maxx. You get something good. Okay, yeah. I went and got this blazer from Marshalls. It's been very serviceable, which is more than I can say for Mitch. No deal. It's stunted picket. Deal. They should have started picket from day one. AJ's right. I'm right. Rich is wrong. Maybe that was the better question, too, was should they have even started him to begin with? Or once you draft I somebody, put him out there. I would have said start picket. I would have been deal on that. Okay, then why but, would you even want Mitch mm -hmm. if you had Mason around? He, he, that's a backup. Because he was 
your more backup. of like, okay, I get where Rich is they coming from too, where he was just kind of sitting in your back pocket in case you didn't get the guy you wanted. They could have draft. drafted Brock Purdy in the seventh round there is what go. they could have done. How about that? <laughs> well, speaking of more drafting, my goodness, another haunting factor to the Steelers this year has been their lack of pass coverage. Currently, a fifth round draft pick in Deron Bland, an undrafted Cater Kohu rank higher than Cam Sutton does. That being said, would you take a fourth round cornerback if you had to go back and not take Calvin Austin, or would you still have felt that taking a receiver in the fourth round was a good decision, Chris? Oh, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, I'm going to say I would still take Calvin Austin so I guess deal I'll take Calvin Austin and that is understanding that he might never be a significant contributor in the pros cuz he's not a big guy and he's already injured I feel very leery that we might are we on Senquez Golson but for offense this time uh, I hope we're not I think you've got to try to stockpile offensive weapons that are versatile to help a rookie quarterback out I would have with reservations and lukewarm here this is not a good sports take because I'm very wishy-washy, but I would have stayed with Calvin Austin as a fourth rounder. I'm not wishy-washy. I'm going deal. I, we haven't seen much from Calvin Austin, one of the fastest guys in the draft. I, I like that draft pick there in the fourth round. I don't know what kind of corner you get in the fourth round. I know you mentioned a couple guys in the fifth round. I like Cam Sutton. They were pretty happy with where they were with the cornerback position, so I'm going deal on Calvin Austin for sure. Interesting. AJ? I actually want to lean to no deal, but I'm going to agree with you guys only because the exceptions you just mentioned, even Cater Kohu, he's you know, got these opportunities because of injuries with Miami, with their you know number one guy, Byron Jones. Um, it's, it's rare, but I also think going forward, the Steelers need to invest in a corner with a higher draft pick, you know, a more um, likely guarantee of a lockdown corner like a sauce Gardner in the first or second rounds um, because we haven't had those marquee names in you know recent years. And this has been a discussion of ours on this show lately um i would love to see what calvin austin has to you know offer but it also seems like there was a lot of depth at this position you know what we've even seen with steven sims for instance this year mm -hmm. and trading away chase claypool there was a plethora of talent at that position so having another option at corner would have been great this year i don't know but i'm still just gonna well, say anthony miller you know. too is a guy that's been on yeah. ir um so hannah did any one of us win the million dollars I'm going to say right now I don't know who would win the million dollars. I'm just going to say I'm going to keep it right here. Maybe we'll have a million dollar question like next week and we'll see who wins because there's a lot to still be debated. But I would say I don't know how I feel about a lot of the answers in regards oh. to winning Calvin Austin oh. wow. over a cornerback. We haven't that's seen him. Maybe next year he's going to be. Uh, Hannah's a harsh critic of that <laughs> Calvin Austin. Thanks take. a lot, wow. Hannah. Stay right there.